you want scriptural support for the things that I'm going to talk about in this video, see the link in the description. I've mentioned in previous videos that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints holds the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. What does restored even mean? What needed to be restored? Why did it need to be restored? How could the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints be the true church if it's less than 200 years old? How could Christianity be true when it's not even the oldest religion in the world? Excuse me. I will answer these questions throughout this video. Where does truth come from? From God. God interacts with individuals through personal revelation felt through his spirit. Oh. But how does God interact with his people as a whole, as a church, through prophets? In the scriptures, we see a pattern of God calling prophets to lead his people. The scriptures also record many times when God's people have turned away from him, rejected his prophets, and distorted his truth. When this behavior is consistent and widespread, it leads to a condition called apostasy. History is written by winners. When apostasy wins, history suffers. You find widespread apostasy several times throughout the Old Testament. When this widespread apostasy occurs, God withdraws his prophets. The scriptures also record a pattern of truth being restored. Enoch restored the gospel. Noah restored the gospel. Abraham restored, Moses restored, Jesus Christ restored the gospel, truth. All of them brought the gospel to those who were in a state of widespread apostasy. When was the last widespread apostasy? A great apostasy was prophesied of in both the Old and New Testaments. Let's take a look at some of those prophecies. In the Old Testament, the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the lands, not a famine of bread nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Worldwide apostasy. This next one, found in the New Testament, is Paul dealing with a specific issue. People in his day were under the impression that the second coming would happen in their lifetime. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Apostasy. Next, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They heap to themselves teachers. The teachers aren't called of God and are consequently not teaching God's truth. Apostasy. One more prophecy found in Acts chapter 20 verses 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. The flock isn't spared. Apostasy. Keep the grievous wolves in mind. I'll mention it again. Again. There are not only prophecies and predictions about a great apostasy, we have evidence of it beginning to occur around the New Testament writers. I'll talk about a couple of those scriptures real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 18, Paul talks about divisions and heresies among the Corinthians. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul marvels over how quickly people have removed themselves and perverted the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Titus chapter 1 verses 9 to 6, 16, Paul tells Titus about gainsayers, people that rebel against and lie about the church in order to get personal gain. He talks about vain talkers, deceivers, people who preach for money. Preaching for money is called priestcraft and has never been a part of the gospel of Jesus Christ and is therefore a false doctrine. He talks about fables that turn from the truth and concludes by telling Titus that these people profess to know God but in works deny him. They profess to know God, perhaps even believe that they do know God, but are not actually in line with God's will, are not following the specific example and organization which Christ has set up himself. In Jude chapter 1 verses 3 to 4, Jude talks about contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints because there are men who have crept in unawares and turned the grace of God into lasciviousness, denying God and Jesus Christ. Remember the grievous wolves that I mentioned? The flock 
isn't spared. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 18, Paul mentions by name two people who are preaching false doctrine, saying that the resurrection is already past, which is overthrowing the faith of some. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, Paul talks about whole groups of saints who have turned away from him. Side note, Paul wrote his second epistle when he was in prison, shortly before he was killed. The church of Jesus Christ is not only facing apostasy from within, but a lot of opposition from without. Tons of Christians, including the apostles, are being imprisoned and killed. Recall that when Judas Iscariot died, that's a depressing story, he was replaced by Matthias. It was important to the organization of the church that there not be just six apostles or even only 11 apostles. There needed to be 12. This organization was designed by Jesus Christ himself, but eventually they just weren't replaced anymore. And the Council of the Twelve Apostles came to an end. There were no more called by God. There were no more prophets and no more apostles to speak on behalf of Jesus. Not simply to speak on his behalf, but to be his mouthpiece. No man is the head of the church. Jesus Christ is supposed to be the head of the church. He is the one that is supposed to be giving instruction to the saints about what the church is going to do, what it's going to be. When Christ is no longer the head of the church, giving revelation through prophets and apostles, there is no more church of Christ. You can have truth, but you're not going to have the one and only true gospel of Jesus Christ. What were people to do? They did the best they could with what they had. But ultimately, a lot of plain and precious truths were lost. Some pretty big ones, such as the nature of God and the plan of salvation. Thus begins a great apostasy, which lasted a long time. If you're wondering about what happens to those people who lived during periods of apostasy, or what happens to people who just never even heard of Jesus Christ, check out my video about the plan, God's plan of salvation, the plan of happiness. Plan of salvation proves God's love for all of his children. When and how did this great apostasy come to an end? I'll talk about that in a future video. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Like if you're feeling this and comment if you have any questions or other thoughts that you'd like to share. Thanks for watching.